Hey everybody, welcome back to another thing podcast. Uh, we have been doing a lot of them in the off season. They've looked a lot of different ways. This is the first in person one of the off season. Many people will probably remember a I don't know scouting report deep dive. You were watching film together yeah. of Scotty's new role back when he was facing a lot of dropped defenses and kind of seeing how he handled that. Josh and I, when he was in town, we looked at the film and talked about it. He is a professional scout. He is somebody who is really good to talk to about draft people and people in the draft. Guess what? The G League Ignite, a team I saw once, a team he's seen in person a few times, many times just doing his film. That's his job. He's very good at it. We're here to talk about City Sissoko, Scoot Henderson, and Leonard Miller. Uh, just off the bat, for anybody wondering, at 13, Leonard would be the most likely, I think. But the Raptors are not only involved in rumors, but I think genuinely, based on what I've heard, would love to get Scoot Henderson on the team. Now, everybody wants Scoot Henderson. That doesn't mean it's a guaranteed thing, yeah. but we're operating in the realm of possibilities. Yeah. Anything to say about these three guys before we kind of jump in? No, they're they're fun prospects. They're they're super athletic, as, especially Scoot. Um, I think Leonard, being a hometown guy, could be a, could be an interesting interesting guy, and as as well as uh, City, as as far as like being a kind of a really good passer could could fit what the Raptors are doing, especially with the new with the new coach. So, yeah. Ryakovich, we'll see what we'll see what plans he has. I don't know when we're recording this before we do any pressers with Ryakovich. Um, hopefully. I mean, I don't know when that's going to be. Regardless, we're going to start at Scoot Henderson. I've seen Scoot Henderson. I've talked a little bit to Scoot Henderson. Um, that makes me really far from being an expert. But I did see him in person. He was incredible. The athletic prowess was, it jumped off the page. I took a picture of him, posted it online, and it went viral on basketball Twitter because his his body is just kind of, it's awesome. like that of a 28-year-old olympic lifter or yeah. something like that and he still can go up 18 feet into the air and catch a lob which he very nearly did yeah. against the 905 a very difficult matchup for him against jeff doughton who is one of the better g league guards you could play you know over this past year um i think doughton is good enough to be in the nba it was a good introduction in that regard scoot henderson if we could get the cell just to kind of get people into it yeah, so with Scoot, he's kind of in the the athletic molds of like the the Derrick Rose, the John Walls, the Russell Westbrooks. So as far as like somebody that you know you could put the ball in hand in their hands and be like the primary advantage creator, Scoot would be kind of the perfect one just because he's probably the most athletic, most explosive guy off his back foot I've ever seen. I, I've ever evaluated just his ability to like find different angles and then and then set up his back foot through like a negative step or a step back and then get by people's hips. It's he's just like the ultimate advantage creator, I would say. That sounds like me at the little run. We just <laughs> <laughs> So I think the first thing that comes to mind with Scoot is, of course, you need the athleticism to create. But the first play I think of is when he played early on, Victor Wembanyama. He split the pick and roll in a really, really small space, exploded yeah. through it. Wembanyama trailed him to the rim, and he went inside hand, high finish, and like any the split he did by the way was back between his own legs from behind the back. So, what type of creativity is he working with? Are there jump shot concerns, or is the jump shot looking to be something you feel good about? You know, all that kind of stuff. Creation tools. Yeah, yeah. As far as like his like pick and roll craft, I think it's really good. Um, he has uh, a six nine wingspan, so like as far as like being able to handle the ball at really really low and and keep the ball away from guys, just because he's much lower than guys, it's it's so easy for him. It's kind of like the the Iverson thing where it's like the ball is too low where guys can't reach down. He's so explosive. He's able to to make different moves. Um, one of the best plays that I like watching him is his splits. Like he he's able to set up his cross into navigating to to bring out the the defender, get him wide, get him wide, and then and then you know attack the the space in between the the defender and the the, the screen defender and and split it. So um, he makes it so easy. And then as far as like his shooting goes, he's. Uh, 38.6 on dribble jumpers and it's so easy for him because he's able to open people's hips and then 
the moment he get, opens people's hips, it's he's rising up and shooting that jumper. He does have like a really hard flick, but his his touch is is pretty decent uh, for for pull ups. As far as playmaking, mm -hmm. like getting getting guys wide in the pick and roll is the whole thing. Yeah. You get them wide, you create a much larger lane for your big to roll or for like that quick throwback for a three, maybe even short roll, depending on how the other team is playing it. Yeah. But how is his recognition as far as playmaking his bigs into good opportunities? He's a very willing passer. Um, and when he does get by his defender or when he is in that situation where he can make kind of uh, pocket passes, um, he's very willing to make it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's like super accurate, but he, he has, he's so strong that he's able to like bump guys to make, to create that space or like just flick it off his strong hands. Like, so it's like massive, massive hands. It's pal he's palming it when he's catching it off a dribble. He can palm it and then, and then uh, kind of flick it into the receiver's hands. Yeah. So, yeah. As far as, because, you know, he's not necessarily a generational talent that, I think that probably gets thrown around too often because yeah. generational is like once a generation, yeah. but there's like probably 30 guys who have been talked about with that mm. tag, but he is a very unique athlete, even when it comes to NBA players. I think it seems like the creation load is something he can walk into immediately at mm. the NBA level. He's going to create advantages, but as far as have you seen teams throw you know, very heady second level of defenses at him to like, okay, you get the advantage, but the defense is now kind of attuned to what you're doing. What are the responses? Like he's a willing passer in the pick and roll. Yes. But what if they make him turn the corner and there's a read out above the break out to the corner? Like what types of reads is he good at making? I think he, he's probably at, at best making the lay down as far as like when he, when he gets to that second level, but as far as like, when um rotation comes he does struggle with that a little bit just as far as like being able to recognize where that help is coming from just because i think he just needs a little bit more time in that space but like i said he is a willing passer so i think though that will come um and then as far as like being able to make the reads to the the second and third level rotations he's so athletic that like he can jump wait for some guy to to rotate over and then make the spray pass to the either either the 45 or the corner so i think the best case of like having scoot is like putting him in a situation where he's like kind of in full stride or like in in momentum and then having having him be able to like make make the lay down because like you have to rotate over at the rim he would maybe be in the ilk of like the tyrese halberton or john morant as far as the jump pass isn't a negative. It's something that he has so much hang time. Yeah. He can still process the floor while up there. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the the jumper and being able to contribute off ball, you know, you, you have to be able to shoot to generate movement from defenses. He has been obviously a player who's had a, the ball in his hands a lot. What have you seen as far as craft with, you know, he's off ball, he's coming off of actions. Is he dragging guys with him? Is he working hard? Is he quick off of pins and stuff like that? Yeah, he's he's very quick off pins. So the G League actually likes to have him come off curls, especially like on, on a down screen, a wide down screen. Um, and that allows him to just yeah be in into into such an explosive state that it's really hard to keep in front. Yeah, he likes to use snatch dribbles. When he uses that snatch dribble, it is just really easy for him to get to his pull up. Yeah, so as far as off ball, he's not really a good like spot up shooter. He's not he could probably take at best attacking close out and doing like a quick one two pull up um but as far as like what he does well off ball i think it's it's mostly as a cutter he's so massive as like a as a target even though he's small he i see they run like some chin stuff for him um so he comes off sets it into like um the horns in like the the elbow to like city or leonard and then he cuts hard and if you don't cut um if you don't cut him off he's he's catching and you can either rise up or just finish through contact Raptors fans will remember Chin. The Raptors run it all the time, particularly for Pascal and Scotty. To, and, you know, if they, they run it typically off of Fred's screen, and then if you get a mismatch, then, hey, that's pretty good. Um, as far as, like, being a wide, burly dude at his young age, is there any screen craft there? Like, as far as being used off ball? Uh, defensively, right? Um, I think he, he struggled... He's not engaged a lot, I find, on defense. And I think that's just part of just kind of playing in the G League a little bit. It's not, there's there's not as much defense played as like 
in general. <laughs> like, like when he is engaged, he can get through screens if he wanted to. Um, but what I find it's it he needs to work on his footwork a little bit, like with the stab step, getting over screens and and just kind of recognizing where screens are coming. And that's part of like being on a younger team too. Once he's able to like kind of hone in on like his strength he re- and, and how fast he is laterally, I think he'll be very disruptive as a defender. But as of right now, I think it's, it's stuff he really needs to work on, especially being younger. So, And then kind of on the other side, a really big guard as far as width. Have they used him as a screener at all? So they, they use him in, they kind of use him in horns as well. So like he's, because he's such a strong, he can hold his own into in like the elbow and they actually throw it into him to make reads out of the, the elbow and kind of like face up, um, read, scan the floor. And um, his scans are pretty quick for, for a guard. So um, because he is a guard, sorry. And um, he's more versatile than just like a guy that just needs the ball in his hands or needs the ball at, in the perimeter to create. So that seems like there's quite a bit of utility yeah. to be used there. The touch at the rim is kind of something I want to talk about. It's not as impressive as many people would, or as his physical profile would make you believe, which believe it or not happens a lot. Like some of the most athletically imposing players don't have a lot of the finishing craft that some more svelte, slinky guys do. But what's been your read on touch and kind of approach at the rim? Yeah, I think I think if he's not dunking it, he he actually doesn't go to the rim a lot. And considering his tools, it's it's interesting that he doesn't. It's it's not like Derrick Rose where he like always got to go, always go, went to the rim and and then countered with with pull ups if if people play off. But with Scoot. It's, it seems like he actually prefers to go to his his pull up just because like and I think that's kind of beneficial to him longer term just because like it it's less likely for injury and he's smaller. Sierra and Fox. Yes, that's, <laughs> exactly. Um, but like his his touch, his touch is definitely is something that he needs to improve on, especially like on floaters and stuff like that. But but he is so strong enough that he's able to like power through guys if he if he does get to the rim. But that's that's kind of something he doesn't do as much as people think. So like a guy gets that light step in on him, like he'll bust that open like a turnstile kind of. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as finishing moves, there's a bunch of different guys finishing a bunch of different ways. Some guys are one note. Some guys is the, you know, you get wide and you try and scoop it. Mm-hmm. That's like a really bad indicator usually. Some guys, there's a lot of euros and like, you know, trying to finish with the, like the push shot at the front of the rim. Some guys are trying to get to the glass. Is there any versatility or diversity in how he tries to finish at the rim, even though he's not getting there a ton? I think some of it is he he likes, he's very powerful off one foot so he can float to the rim as opposed to like and take off far um and he likes to use right hand reverse layups um just because it, it, it's he's able to like cradle to his left and then get get into like a turn where it's like oh and my I'm right inside hand lay merchant exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> as far as can he take the bump in air he can yeah because he's he's massive and and he's he's explosive and um but as far as like if that's what he as a go-to because he's not much of a two foot jumper and he's more of a one foot he's he's trying to beat guys to the rim as much if he does get in that those situations glass or front of the rim is there a difference to you um not really i i think he does both a little bit um but i do think like if he does I actually, you know, I think it is glass because like he likes to tap board as well. So it's if if he's not dunking, he's tapping on the board. To... I said that's me. <laughs> I'm, yeah. Um, as far as any other offensive stuff, this is a guy who is, you know, mm-hmm. for for many people is a the number two. For some people, as it turns out, maybe for Charlotte is a top three guy. Mm-hmm. As far as betting the farm on him as an offensive talent to kind of like you hand this guy the ball, you get based on contracts, like seven years. You get the rookie scale contract, you get the max extension that comes because hopefully he's great. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about him being an offensive engine in the NBA? I feel great. I think because he's so crafty in the pick and roll and he's, and he's a, a little bit, above his years and and like his 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 craft in the pick and roll i think he'll be uh, 
perfectly fine giving him the bags because like and and giving him the offensive load because like i think he'll be able to generate a lot of advantages in pick and roll either in isolation situations and like and if you run him through action so i think he could be your primary advantage creator i think so too i obviously haven't seen as much of him as you but not only seeing him just like burn guys in isolation like you talked about that back that back foot is crazy and those guys are so tough to contain but in the pick and roll you know some guys are one speed if they're that athletic he has multiple speeds which like he he has multiple speeds going vertical up court multiple speeds going sideways and that's just like that puts you in such a strong position to mess with different coverages like the, i don't think there's a coverage that stops scoot with that willingness and with like he's so athletic you try and jump him he might turn the corner but he'll like capably find the guy. Yeah, yeah. He, you might turn the corner, or he might drag out the the big, and then it's 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 mismatch city. So like, it's 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 fun. Like whenever you see how like a point guard kind of navigates the screens and sets up the the defender in a screen, he's someone that has that craft to to get guys, and he has like the the double cross, like the one that Kawhi has, like the yep. with the left foot in front. It's like do do quick, and then because his shoulders are are pretty pretty. You have to stay in front of his shoulders as well. So it, he, he has that like jittery step and then it gets guys below the screen and he goes over. And if you hedge hard, he's dragging that big out and it's it's it, it gets it gets fun to to see what he what he does, like as far as like attacking the big or like looking to to make like skip passes because people pre pre rotate and, and and try to like help off the big because he's in a, he's on an island. Yeah. Yeah. We were kind of going over the numbers before we talked about this, looking at the dribble jumper and then the log min range shooting 38%. For anybody who's wondering, 38% isn't the creme de la creme of mid long mid range shooting in the NBA. Usually it's between like 47, 51% is going to see you as very elite. But I think for a 19 year old guard who has so many physical tools he can rely on, 38% is a really strong starting place. I'm interested not only the dribble jumper to kind of, you know, weaponize as he grows, but just the jumper in general, how you think that will translate and grow at the NBA level. Yeah, he's a he's a two motion shooter. So like as far as like his his shooting mechanics are like, it's it's more of like a guy that's better off the off the dribble and off of, off pull ups because it's not one motion and it's not like a cat. He's not he like a, his own rhythm. exactly. Um, when he's in rhythm, he's really really on. Like his shot is 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 good. Um, but if you get him off balance a little bit, it can it can be a little bit too hard of a flick. But his his shoot his shooting indicators as far as like a, a free throw shooter, he's seventy four point four percent. It's not too bad. Sorry, yeah. And then from three, I think he was uh around thirty two percent. So it's it's not too bad as far as like what his shooting indicators are. But I think as far as like as what what type of shooter he is, I think he'll be at best like off the dribble, pulling up in the mid range. Yeah. Thirty two, I mean Fred Van Vliet was there for like half a season, you know, and <laughs> the Raptors made it work. Yeah. Um so catch and shoot, you're not expecting like a bunch of volume, right? I, I I don't think so, but maybe because he's so good off the dribble, maybe he can be better like off of screens and and just shooting if people go under him. Um, it, it definitely has to deal with his rhythm. So like if he can get that rhythm dribble, that bounce or like the the bounce and the two foot gather, I think that's what. Um, and and that doesn't really do well outside out to the three, in my opinion. You know who, now this isn't a comp, obviously, but Donovan Mitchell is like, sets his own rhythm, gets into it. I wonder if Scoot might end up being like pretty good because to be a good pull-up three-point shooter, you have to shoot like 33%. It's not it's not a high bar. Like if you want to be the elite and have people talk about you as a shooter for years and years, you're going to need to be north of like 37, 38% on pull-ups on decent volume. Yeah. But if you, if, if you're a guy like Scoot, if he hits like 32, 33% of his pull-ups within like the first three years of his career, it's going to be something that teams like care about yeah. and want to stop. So I wonder if, you know, if there's anything, cause he's, he's just so creative in the pick and roll. If it's like, he starts to be able to work off of that. I, I do really wonder. Um, last thing I guess we'll talk about is he'll be playing next to Scotty Barnes. If he go, if the Raptors make a trade, if if you know things shake up, it's you know just it, who knows what happens. But 
you talked about being used as a guy off ball who can catch and finish and like will be used in space. And also that there's not that much, I guess, hope for him to be like a dumb, a really good catch and shoot guy is that like he is in a unique position where he's so physically imposing as a guard that I wonder as like a cutter. Yeah. Oh, he's great as a cutter. Um, and I think that's what um, the Ignite used him out as a lot, especially when he's off ball and he's playing with uh, London Johnson, another, a younger, another um, Ignite kind of point guard on their team. And they all, he also plays sometimes with uh, Pooch, Pooch Jetter. Yeah, off ball, they, they use him as a cutter, someone that can kind of put pressure on the rim coming off momentum, like on, on stagger screens. Yeah. And I think that's so useful to, to kind of, yeah, defensives that kind of will have to collapse because he's so strong and such a good, possibly a good finisher at the rim um, moving forward. So if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure the G League Ignite ran for Scoot, the the like rip screen that Lowry and DeRozan, like just like send a guy to the rim. <laughs> His catch radius is insane. Yes. Yep. And yeah, like I think that there's going to be lots of opportunities for him to catch um, transition player. Oh, elite, like just um, probably the hard like so hard to keep in front of just because like what he does is is try to manipulate backpedaling guys yes. oh my gosh it's it, and it and he can control the ball so well because of his long arms that he can use like bounce um high gathers it can be he could take like two dribbles from the half court and he's he's at the rim dunking it and yeah like and he has that you're you're weary of his pull up or you're weary of him kicking out to a shooter so in transition, I think, and as a transition initiator, it's it's he's just so scary to to keep in front of. Yeah, his his against the nine oh five, his grab and go was what brought them back because the nine oh five were like busting them up the first little while, and then Scoot was just doing like grab and go, a little bit of the half court pull up that eighteen footer, mm. and they came back to within like one point, and then Scoot got ejected from oh, that yes. game. That was the game he got ejected. <laughs> yeah. um, that sucked, by the way, because that game was heating up. It was going to be pretty good. But um, any last thoughts on Scoot before we talk about Leonard Miller? Yeah, he, he doesn't need the ball to be effective. So the game I went to was uh, against the Iowa Wolves, I believe. Um, and he was not playing well. He was missing. He was kind of late on his first level reads. His passing was a little bit a little bit all, all over the place. Um, but yeah, what he's a really good rebounder as a guard as well because of his his athleticism. So he basically had like a triple double at at halftime because he was just so active on the boards and and pushing the ball in transition that um, it was a it was an up and down game and and everything was kind of with pace because of Scoot's ability to kind of push the ball and, and grab and go. Yeah, Raptors fans will recognize what like somebody who just injects pace into the game, even if it's not really flowing that way. Um, Kyle Lowry was exceptional at it. Scotty Barnes is also pretty good at it, albeit he hasn't reached his peak in that regard. Um, Leonard Miller, 6'9", without shoes, yeah. a 7'2 wingspan, I yes. believe. Um, for anybody who's wondering about Scoot, he's 6'2", and with a 6'9 wingspan. So plus 7, yes. pretty gnarly. I'm not plus anything, I don't think. I'd love to be plus 7, you know. Um, Leonard Miller. The quick, he, Canadian, I saw him play. I'll start off with my thing, I guess. Um, he was great. He he has, I think people would be like, oh, it's like Tristan Thompson would be like immediately. It's like a Canadian guy who you're like, damn, he got after that rebound. He got after that. But Leonard, I think, has like a really great sense of where to be on the court. And he is such like a burly, like you constantly see guys who play against him. It's like a battle. Like he always makes it physical down low. And so I always really like that aspect of his game. He's a little bit longer. There's some intriguing creation stuff going on as well. Some intriguing shooting stuff. So that's probably the big sell in my mind is like he's going to bring motor. He has physical tools for a classic motor guy, but he also has shown flashes of a bunch of other things. And so I'm wondering where you sit on him. And by the way, for anybody listening, Josh has sat down with Leonard and done a uh, film review. So if anybody, that'll be linked below. It's them two talking about his game, which is will be more informative than Josh talking to me about him. Uh, yeah, with, with Leonard, I saw him kind of 
kind of throughout his progression these past couple of years. So I saw him a little bit at OSBA and then I saw him um, at Hoop Summit, the, the draft combine, and then now with the Ignite. What first started off with him was he was he was skinny, but he had really interesting movement skills. Yes. Um, and because he played in the OSBA, he had to kind of create a lot um, and kind of dribble and, and create his own shot until he got a guard that that kind of transferred to to the um, Fort Erie team. Um, and then that's when he started to play off ball more and kind of be more effective as like a, a cutter or like a screen and roll partner and, and like a transition player. And, and for me, the things that stood out the most watching him live now with the Ignite is that he did get bigger and stronger. His, his, his shoulders are starting to fill out. Him and Scoot are massive. <laughs> um, Astros. Yes, exactly. Um, and then um, he he's he's like a gazelle as far as like moving moving nor- north to south. Yeah. He's a really good north to south. So as far as like his end to end speed, he can beat a lot of bigs down the floor, and he could be useful in like the early Pascal role where he's just he's booking it down. He's he's contesting a a, ro- a rotation and then he's busting it down to the court and gets a wide open layup because scoot or lowry to pascal was kind of like that hit ahead pass and then he's hitting a wide open layup and i think that's what he excels at um as far as like what he did this year at at ignite as far as what he does in transition and then in the half court he's he's gotten to as like a really good target from the dunker spot or like from cutting from the 45 or cutting up from the from the baseline and he can he can catch keep it keep it high and then either dunk it or just use like some touch around the rim. He could use either hand. He is a lefty, um, but he's more useful um, when he can kind of like one foot gather and use like his awkward steps and like his his shoulders are kind of like follow his legs. So it's not like a guy that like uses his upper body first. So he's a little bit slow to react. And, and I'll, we'll talk about this later in defense where that can kind of be a problematic sometimes. But as far as like, how it's useful on offense is when he's cutting or when he's when he's gathering he can kind of take a a weird long step and then he can bump guys with their shoulder and then he has opening for easy lay comfortability in traffic yeah do you think he's ooh um he is still a little bit off balance and a little bit awkward so sometimes he does get stripped or like it's it's like loose but when he does have like a good hold on it he can actually create pretty well from like off his uh his gather steps. Yeah. When I when I saw him against the nine oh five, the the nine oh five, I can't remember who they had playing center. Big, mm-hmm. big guy. And Leonard, there was like a ton of competitiveness under the rim. Getting away from that a little bit, the jumper. Thoughts on the jump shot? It's a work in progress, I'd say. He loads up very heavy into his left hip and it comes low and it comes away from his body. So him trying to pull up on guys, it's really tough because it's it's far and it can be stripped easily. But as far as like someone that like his touch, it, it's actually not too bad. Like I believe on catch and shoot attempts, he's 34.2% on catch and shoot attempts at, on spot up threes and, and a 79% shooter on at the free throw line. Mm-hmm. So when there's more movement involved, I think it really it it really it's really tough for him. But if it's just a set shot, I think he's he's actually pretty decent. Can I ask you a, a scouting question? <laughs> if there's a guy who's like clunky, but gets to a point where he can he can find the right stuff without movement, do you look at that as like a major win, or do you say, uh, you know, like it, it's going to get complicated at the next level? It's not going to be as quiet as you want it to be, or do you think like, well, he already sorted one thing out. Maybe he sorts out the rest, even if the mechanics are that noisy. Oh. Uh- personally i think it's tough as you progress to a higher level the less space you have the less timing you have to kind of get get into your catch gather rise get into your rise from like your 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 shot pocket i think to me it it gets tougher but i i do leave the door open and be like hey like maybe there is something there um and as far as like what their touch goes and for me I, I think some guys are are different, but for me, I think I like very good mechanics and I like smooth things to 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 kind of happen to be elite at the next level. Yeah, you mentioned Pascal is like a guy who's if there's space, he's gonna fill it with pace 
and albeit awkward movement, effective movement. What happened to Pascal is, you know, he dominated in space, started seeing more of a defensive response. And then the bench mob thing was like, oh, this is interesting. He, he is making a lot of great reads now that he's getting a little bit more attention, now that his movement is like, oh, this guy's interesting, and he'll finish the bucket. How is Leonard responding to like, maybe it's a screen and roll where he's catching, somebody stepping up, there's a pass to be made to the corner or a lay down, or even if he's in space and guys are filling lanes in transition, how is he at making the right reads? When he was at uh, Fort Erie going into last year's draft, I actually felt like I think his best his best scenario would probably be like a connective big just because he does have some passing passing touch and he can make reads on the short roll. It's just sometimes gathering into it, get catching and being comfortable on the catch is is a little bit tough for him. Um, but as far as like somebody that can make like a, if you ca- if he catches, he faces up and has space, he can make like a high low pass, entry pass into the post. He had this one pass to uh, to Sharif. He he set a screen, kind of dove early, caught it, and then someone came up and then just floated over to to Sharif, and it was just. It was just like a big to big pass, so he kept it high. And I think Leonard's very intriguing because he has so many different things. But then, but then it's like, what does he really, really do well? And so far, it's just play finishing. But I think there is some connective stuff, and even like handoff stuff, dribble handoff stuff. Um, he has a decent handle, like he can he can initiate and transition. It's still it's awkward because he doesn't play with bend at all. Um, but when he does play with a little bit of bend, you can see some like dribble moves that he can like keep on a DHO kind of use an in and out and go to the three point line face up and then, and then hezzy and then kind of attack a, a slower big. And then he'll be able to like kind of draw foul or, or get to the rim. I was, that was the next thing I was going to ask is like broken plays is where a lot of these types of guys make their money is like the balls in their hands. They're weird movers, but they're effective. And that's where you see guys who are like, that free throw rate is insane. You know, like there's a lot of finishes. These, you know, you recognize some of these guys towards the end of games when games break down a little bit. It's garbage time. This guy's just like bucket, 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 bucket. As far as like in an organized half court and having opportunities at the NBA level, maybe it's fives, maybe it's fours. Do you think he's going to be able to beat guys? Off the dribble, or yeah, I think I think slower bigs. He he has a chance, um, he, because of his handle and his his he's actually decent as far as like his first step. It's maintaining those steps. It's 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 awkward, so it's it's not very great. If you kind of develop that and see where it goes, I think there's there's something there. Yeah, yeah. On the other side, not getting beat. We won't talk about anything in particular right now. But what is his role defensively with the ignite? Um, he, he, he guards bigs. So he's mostly fours and fives. He p- plays small ball five sometimes. Um, what he excels at is kind of being like a secondary rim, rim protector, kind of being that rover and closing out to guys in the corner. Cause he has long strides and he's pre- pretty mobile from like going from, um, protecting the rim to rotating over to like a corner, corner kick out and, and kind of getting his full, full extension to to close out um and and that's like one of the things that stood out to me when i first watched him at um the bio steel game in 2022 um and he was really good at like his movement skills as far as like being able to close out to a corner or 45 it stood out and like slower guards that kind of have like and and high school guys that kind of have slower mechanics and aren't aren't very great at their shot prep yet he was just getting out to and and being able to to close out so i think when leonard the the things that leonard excels at on defense is is probably mostly um secondary room protecting and then being able to close out as far as secondary room protection is like a burgeoning skill in the nba and bigger guys than leonard with maybe a little bit more elite athletic tools are doing it a lot more what do you think his role would be at the next level Oh, in the NBA. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think kind of starting off on probably fours. I, I don't think he has the 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 coordination to kind of uh defend down. Um and then defending up to like bigger, bigger guys, I think it'll be tough for him just because he does struggle with strength creation moves. So like if a guy bumps him and he's off balance, he'll he'll still stay 
tall, but he won't, he'll be kind of out of the play because he, he, he doesn't have that um, absorption as, as well as other guys um, because his coordination from like his legs and his upper body is a little bit off. I'd say. You mentioned about leading with the upper body as opposed to the lower body and how that might affect defense. Let's get into that now. Yeah. So when he's in, um, when he's in drop, when he's dropping, uh, or like he's showing and he's rever- uh, he's coming back, that's something that he I feel like he struggles with because his upper body follows his legs. So like his legs turn, but then his 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 upper body's a little stiff and it, and his shoulders are a little stiff. So like rotating to like being able to contest on time, it, it takes like probably a half a sec- second longer. Um, changing directions, it's a little bit tough for him unless it's like you're, he's just backing up. But if you you're, you kind of get him into like more east-west movement, it's hard for him to like plant, turn, because because his upper body is a little bit stiff and it's a little rigid to to be able to kind of stay stay in the shooter's pocket or like be able to deflect passes and whatnot. That makes it sound like he might struggle a bit more in the space of the NBA as far as because he is a toolsy guy he intriguing mover at his size what does like your 90th percentile outcome look like for Leonard Miller what's your what's your hopeful outlook for his game as far as like a comp or just take, like take it wherever you want hmm, that's interesting I'd like to see him with a guy that like with a really good playmaker I think the Scoot pairing was really great for him because Scoot just creates so many advantages and he can be that kind of the dunker spot guy, the cutter. He can be, um, he can play with Scoot and like a, a two man action where it's like he's in the, he's in the high post and like he's making passing reads out of there. I think like his median outcome to me is like probably like a, a rotation big and, and maybe he, maybe he could excel in like a Chris Boucher role, but a little bit more kind of hand ball ball in his hands more than just like oh it's just straight cutting straight setting hard screens and 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 bringing guys to the rim with him i wonder if there's like a a universe where some of those really intriguing ball skills and if his screen craft gets like impressive if that he becomes like you know on a bench a little hub for some some bench shooters or something like that it could it could be interesting yeah um anything on leonard before we talk about city He's a Scarborough guy and I grew up in Scarborough. So shout out to shout out to to Scarborough and, and shout out to Leonard and his family. Um, I know Leonard's a really nice kid. Um, he he likes to play board games, I, I, I found. Um, and he's he's very down to earth. And I, I, I had a really good interview with him. So shout out to him. Oh, yeah. All the best to Leonard. Um, City Sissoko also on the G League Ignite. This is the G League Ignite podcast. Six for five, I believe. Or six without six, shoes, without shoes, yeah. <laughs> and a six nine wingspan, maybe a little bit less. I know the least about Sissoko. He had a very quiet game when he was here, and obviously, I'm trying to catch up on the draft. And Sissoko isn't really in the range, mm-hmm. but we're here to talk G League Ignite. Maybe you know, maybe the Raptors they buy a second this year. Maybe there's a who knows what happens in the first round. I'll, there's like four teams that have like 16 draft picks between the four of them. Who knows what happens? City Sissoko, what is the sell? Um, he's kind of like a a big guard. Um, he kind of started off, I believe, in France as a point guard. Um, and he was kind of trained as that. So I think his skill set comes from being a, a really good passer. Uh, and and really having good feel for putting guys in position to kind of be able to hit them ahead of their in stride, um, kind of finding the right read when he's scanning. Um, so like for me, I think he kind of has like a a point forwardy type type feel to him, just because he's kind of big as well. He has really really massive legs that are are really strong and and very useful for being able to defend or like if he's with momentum use them to create space on drives and 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 the sell on um city overall is just guy that has good feel for the game and that will continue advantages and be a really very good connector so there's a few guys in the nba who make a killing as advantage extenders uh dean wade is maybe the best example of a guy who doesn't have many elite things about his game but is really good at extending advantages and just kind of being like 
you know, a connector doesn't mean you're elite. It doesn't mean you're a playmaker by any means. It, it means like, you know, there's four guys on the court. You're the one guy who helps piece them together and helps them operate in closer proximity. What takes him past being a connector? I think his shot has to come around. He's only a 30% uh, three-point shooter, but his mechanics aren't bad. So like, as far as like when he had like unguarded spot up threes, he was actually pretty decent. Being able to to hit those consistently he was a 30 percent shooter but when he when he's able to to be able to to kind of do get some closeouts and be able to be on the move a little bit more that's when he can make be be successful as like someone that can spray it or like someone that can make initiate initiate actions and like for example they had john jenkins who's who's a known shooter and he's been a, a shooter for a long time um he he plays on the G League night and they run a lot of stagger stuff for him, kind of some like Clay Thompson type 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 actions. And City City was able to kind of find either hitting him in a shooting pocket on the movement perfectly, or he could actually hit guys ahead of them and have that pass placement just a little bit ahead where like they can catch it and they'll be into wide open space off just one dribble. And and that's something that really stood out to me with with city he's so good at being able to like catch like we said continue advantages um if, even when, if i bring it back to hoop summit the thing that really stuck out to me is like he does have a decent handle for his size um and and because he has those guard skills that he can like catch scan the floor and make the right read if he gets like a second second side pick and roll or something like that and they sell out to the the roller they sell out to the corner because they're like this guy wants to pass he wants to make reads what does that look like if there's kind of a lane with a, a big who's like are you gonna try it you know is he capable of taking it downhill and finishing he can and and i think that's where his size comes to play i think he's actually a decent strength creator i think he can create off like veer steps that like i'm gonna get downhill a big steps up, I can do like a veer step bump and finish a finish. But that's where he does kind of struggle a little bit because he is also stiffer in the upper body. So he's not like manipulating the angles as much um, and being able to like kind of change, change different uh, finishing angles. I do think like he's strong enough to like power through guys and he can generate a lot from his legs into, into guys. Yeah. Defensively, usually the connectors, they also give you a decent like, they, they survey the floor on offense. They have a great sense of where their teammates are, where the defense is. Typically, that translates that awareness defensively. How is he on that end? Yeah, he's he's a good he's a good positional defender. Um, I think he's he, switching onto guards is a little tough for him because he is slower footed. But I do think there's some there's some versatility to to defend up a little bit just because he is stronger he he was guarding kenny lofton because leonard was struggling with him so he switched he was guarding he was able to kind of swim over get some steals on that on, on him a little bit and absorb the bumps that that kenny's no, known for so i think as far as like what he does on defense i think he'll be very good positionally and then as far as like someone that can defend up a little bit so he would be a guy like if he and leonard played against each other he would have an okay time guarding up against a guy like Leonard. Yes. If if I so if there's a four who like maybe strength is their bag, but as far as like the skill stuff is gonna keep them in closer proximity to the lane, yeah. he can kind of guard up and be that guy. Yeah, like kind of like not saying he's the level of defender as Grant Williams, but kind of the similar, hey, I'll switch onto a big and I can absorb some bumps sometimes and then if they have if they have a good finishing angle they can shoot over me but as far as like keeping that space and and kind of being able to hold their ground on some on bump moves i think city would be okay on if if you were painting the picture of like a really great outcome for him what do you expect to develop or what are you hoping develops at like a decent clip i hope the shot comes around and i, I think if the shot comes around because his mechanics are actually pretty decent um he'll be able to kind of hit spot up threes and then that's what his he'll probably be like a kind of like a three and d guy that can connect as well and, and make make cool passes off the dribble grab and go initiate um and just be like a useful role player i would say i think that's probably where i have him as far as like 
where I see his ultimate outcome ending up just because I don't think he has the foot speed to kind of create for himself. And then he'll definitely have to be a guy that plays off the ball and initiate and or or connect. Given his mock draft status or kind of where he's being positioned, do you think he's a, a guy who gets like a second contract as a second look? Or do you think he's a guy who probably gets like a, a second contract as an extension? Probably a second look. I think I think it I think if that shot doesn't come around, I think it's going to be tough for him to to kind of stick around the league just because there's a lot of guys similar size um, that can shoot or they, they, they've they already shown that they sh- can shoot. The guy that I think of instantly is um, uh, Semi Ojule, yeah. kind of, and, and they're kind of similar body type. I do think there's some more more guard skills uh, as far as like what City has, but and um, he could probably be the similar type shooter, I think. Um um, but as far as like what his as like a like an off ball finisher, it it he doesn't have like crazy no step burst or or like vertical, sorry, and like being able to be like a finisher off ball. Um, the only thing is probably just as a cutter or a slasher. The not in body type, but the skill set you're describing sounds very similar to like DeAndre Bembry. Mm, yes, yeah, yeah, very similar to, but he's like a strong version of like a, a big guy version more slinky. slinky and that can, that can kind of like find seams. Whereas like um, thing is making his seam and he's going through guys. Yeah. Touch as far as, you know, if you're a strength creator, a lot of the best strength creators is like touch is you, you gotta be able to bully guys around so that you can move and, you know, operating in the tight, you know, competitive areas of the court but and you have that touch to kind of like reward that spot on the floor how is Sissoko there it's it's okay I I, like I said like he's a little bit stiff in the upper body so it's like being able to kind of like if you want to go up and under and and kind of switch angles or like pump fake and switch switch to the left hand I it's kind of tough for him because he does like you bump him and he's stuck in his load up but he's still creating enough space where like he'll hold the space and he'll kind of go up but yeah that's something like that's what that's what kind of sets him back as far as like being like why he's considered maybe closer to like the end of the first round and probably a second rounder yeah yeah anything on Sissoko before we get out of here uh I think he's I think he could, I think there's a role for him in the NBA. I do think like if he does end up shooting shooting three a little bit at a decent better at a decent clip, I think there's something with his passing that can be very useful in 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 offenses that like to a lot of ball movement. So with the Raptors with the new coach, maybe there's something there. <laughs> Fingers crossed because I just it's way better when players they you know their their skill sets develop like where the league being where it's at is just because like there's so many good players in the league and so many skill sets that would have been truly unique in like 2007 are just like dime a dozen now. And so, yeah, I I hope city turns out, man. That's uh, not that I have seen a bunch of them, but I just, man, young players, I really want them to grow their games. It's uh, anything on scoop Leonard or city before we uh, get on out of here. And if the Raptors get scooed at three, um, that'll be a lot of fun, I'd say. Um, so we'll see if what happens with the Raptors and if they make a decision to kind of rebuild around some like a scoot and thing. But um, do I see Leonard being in that space? I don't. It's it's like for the Raptors, I think there's too much redundancy where with with guys that they already currently have on the roster with Leonard. Um, and then City maybe he could be like a by second round pick type of thing. Um, uh, Leonard, I think like Brooklyn. Just yeah. with like Cam and Michael, there's like there's shooting there. They're going to play like a decent amount of pace and space. I'm like, eh, you probably fit pretty well there. And they have 21 and 22. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like the back end of the teens, I think some of the shooting is going to go. So yeah, I don't really know though. Scoot, if he falls, I've said this before, but man, if he falls to three, they're... You make a compelling package and say, like, would you please? I I know I actually we both know some scouts who are like a little lower on Scoot and saw like, well, the the lack of rim pressure, given the tools. What does that say about, you know, what's he going to try to do? The shooting doesn't come all the way around. We've seen really bursty guards who can shoot. 
end, it's like, you know, may, maybe maybe they think it's not going to turn out, but yeah. I'm a believer. Yeah, I think you. he's awesome, man. Um, anything before we get out of here? No, uh, shout out to to On Point Scouting, the te- the team I, I've been working with uh, the past year, and kind of being back and forth between Toronto and LA. Um, new big things are coming soon, so um, uh, be on the lookout for for On Point On Point Scouting. Oh yeah, and if I can say Josh's work, I always make sure be it, be it like a written thing, be it doing a video you know, an interview with Leonard Miller or, you know, just like threading tweets of saying like, Hey, this is, or just us talking about a player. Um, I think he looks at the game similar to me, but uh, better obviously, and spends a lot more time on it. So I learn an endless amount. Uh, his Twitter will be linked. His interview with Leonard Miller will be linked. And uh, if anything else we think of will be linked, but um, one of the best scouts doing it. So you can learn a lot about basketball by following him. He will talk about the game at the level that you need to hear it. And uh, yeah, just follow Josh. Learn a bunch about basketball. Enjoy the game more. Let's, Let's get out of here. All right. See ya.